Good morning, everyone. This is Wendy Barlow from Cohen, Tucker, and Adis talking to you today about family reunification parole. This was a program announced earlier in the year by the Biden administration. Essentially, family reunification parole has been around for a while. It's been limited to Haitian most recently, but the announcement earlier this year was that the program was going to be expanded and also revamped a little bit. So what is it? It's a parole program for individuals who are the beneficiaries of approved I-130s. So if you have filed an I-130 for a family member who is overseas and that petition has been approved, but they're still waiting to immigrate because maybe their priority date is not current or their priority date's current, but there's no interview yet. This is a process that would allow them to enter the U.S. and essentially wait here while they're waiting for their priority date to become current or to get an interview with USCIS. So how does it work? Like I said before, this program originally applied to Haitians. What has happened recently is the Biden administration is expanding that to include Colombia, Cuba, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. So Haiti stays but it also adds these other countries. Those who, again, are the beneficiaries of approved I-130s, not pending, they have to actually be approved by USCIS and their immediate family members would be eligible for this parole program. How does it work? This is not something that you can go to the government and ask for. This is something the government is going to send you an invitation to apply for. So what is happening is, is the National Visa Center is reviewing petitions that may, or cases that may be eligible, and they are sending invitations. The invitations for the family reunification parole process started being sent out in July of this year. So they've just started this program. They have changed the program a little bit because before Cuban and Haitian nationals had to undergo in-person interviews for all beneficiaries. This may not be required anymore. The applications will be completed online. Typically, individuals will be undergoing identity and eligibility, case-by-case assessment, as well as security vetting and they may not actually have an interview. Um, There's no fee for this process, so you don't have to pay the government to apply. If you're working with an attorney, the attorney may charge you a, a legal fee for their work, but there's no government fee required. So be careful because there will be scams, I'm sure. Unfortunately, right now, I can't tell you how long the process is taking. It just was rolled out. We'll get a better understanding of how long from filing to parole document being issued, we'll see in the near future. Okay. If your family member is outside the U.S., that's who applies. Family members inside the U.S., this is not going to apply to them. You will be required as the U.S. citizen or green card holder or someone else who's eligible in the U.S., you will have to file what's called a Form I-134A for the principal beneficiary, as well as qualifying immediate relatives. This is a form that is an affidavit of support. It's indicating that you agree to make sure that your family members or friends do not become public charges. So you are agreeing to make sure that they have a level of support uh, at the poverty line. Again, if you have a pending case, you will not receive an invitation until that application is, that petition is approved. The parole will last for up to three years. So when the person is paroled into the U.S., they will be granted up to three years stay. That is determined on a case-by-case basis. So some individuals may get less than that, depending on the circumstances. After someone is paroled into the U.S., they are eligible to apply for employment authorization. This will allow them to legally work in the U.S. while they're here. And parole can be extended. So for example, If they are paroled in the U.S. and let's say they're given three years, it's very important that you monitor when their parole expires because in some cases people have very lengthy waits for immigrant visas, especially in that sibling category or that married sons and daughters of U.S. citizens. If their parole expires and they stay in the U.S. without extending that or being re-paroled, they will be out of status and that will impact their ability to adjust status. Essentially, they will no longer be eligible to adjust status because they will be accruing unlawful presence. This will require them to go through consular processing. 
And depending on the length of overstay, they may have to also apply for a waiver. So what is good is make sure you're paying attention. Nowadays, we all have these great smartphones for the most part. Put it in your calendar, you know, like six months before it expires that it's coming up. This way you can take action appropriately, have plenty of time to submit an application per the process that USCIS announces for it right now. We don't know what the process is because pretty much nobody's been paroled in, but I'm sure that more information will come as things continue to progress. So just make sure you're making you're following when your parole expires and taking the necessary steps to extend it so that you remain in status. If you have questions about the family reunification process, parole process, or any other area of immigration law, please contact our office. Again, Cohen, Tucker, and Adis. Our number is 212-840-0050. You can also find us on the internet at www.cohentuckerlaw.com. We're happy to, you know, speak with you or your family members to f- address questions regarding this or any other immigration topic. That's it for today. Not a lot of news on anything else going on. This was something that came out recently and we've had a lot of interest in. So I wanted to make sure we gave everyone an update. Have a great day.